Cole McGrath, the demon of Empire City and the patron saint of Numeray. Having recently replayed the infamous series, including all of its spin-offs and comic tie-ins, I've decided to scale the initial protagonist of Sucker Punch's acclaimed superhero sandbox series. Now, if you've ever played or even heard of the infamous series, you know that it's renowned for including a karma system in which moral choices made by the player affect the story. As far as the continuity of these decisions are concerned, series game director Nate Fox has stated that the good karma ending of Infamous 2 was chosen as the series canon moving into Second Son after seeing the trophy data showing that the bulk of players had chosen that ending. So, canonically, Cole McGrath is a morally upstanding hero, which is the narrative I will convey in the lore section later on. For the sake of scaling Cole, there are certain feats he performs in the non-canon evil timeline that should be applicable to canon Cole seeing as one of the few consistencies across timelines is Cole's absorption of blast cores, those being Cole's method of increasing his power level seen throughout Infamous 2. So, if you see footage of evil Cole, or feats performed exclusively by him, know it should scale to Cole's canon counterpart. For the sake of comprehensiveness, I will be looking at alternate versions of Cole, such as Kessler, a future version of Cole from a darker timeline, the version of Cole from Infamous 2's evil ending, in which he's given the powers of series antagonist The Beast, and Vampire Cole from Festival of Blood, a mostly non-canon DLC side story that should scale off from the main game. More on that later. For now, the lore section. As always with my lore sections, this will be a brief rundown of the character's general plot, where it's relevant to the character's scaling. If you're interested in replaying or experiencing the infamous series for the first time, I implore you to track down PS3 copies of the games or play them on PS Now. With that said, Cole McGrath was an everyman, a college dropout, an amateur urban explorer, and a professional bike messenger, until the fateful day when he delivered his most recent package, the Ray Sphere, a device designed to drain the neuroelectric energy of people within a six block radius and focus it into an individual. Leaving Cole a lone survivor amongst the rubble, the Ray Sphere had served its purpose. It had activated his dormant conduit gene, granting him the ability to produce, absorb, and control electricity. Unfortunately for Cole, and what was left of Empire City, the Ray Sphere would create much more harm than good. The radiation from the Rayfield explosion gave way to a plague, adding to the already steep death toll left by the initial detonation. This gave way to riots and looting, all mostly led by other conduits whose powers were activated just as Cole's had been. It was Cole's mission to re-establish order and bring power back to Empire City, all the while gaining new powers and abilities. He would face and defeat various gangs and conduits until facing the true orchestrator of these events, Kessler. After proving more powerful than Kessler, Cole received a vision, and the veil on all recent events would be lifted. Kessler was Cole from the future, a future, where instead of using his powers to potentially save the world and those he loved from suffering, he had chosen to run from the world-ending threat, the Beast. With the world laid to ruin, Kessler would travel back in time, amass great resources, fund the development of the Ray Sphere, and place Cole at the center of its blast. Kessler sought to avert the destruction of the planet in a new timeline by making sure Cole would be capable of making sacrificial decisions for the greater good, so that when the beast were to arrive, Cole would be ready. Following Kessler's death, his portent of the future would come to pass. The beast had arrived, but Cole was not ready. While doing considerable damage to the beast, it was not enough, and the beast had drained Cole of his power, forcing him to abandon Empire City and seek to restore his power and then some in New Marais. After once again freeing a city from conduit-led oppression and amassing enough power to activate the Rayfield inhibitor, Cole was met with a revelation and a choice. The beast had turned out to be John White, an ally from Infamous One, who was seemingly killed by a blast caused by Cole's destruction of the Ray Sphere in that game. He was revealed to have been a conduit whose powers were activated in said blast. He revealed to Cole that the same plague that had befallen Empire City would find its way across the globe, and that unless their genes were activated, even dormant conduits would fall victim to it, alongside humanity. Cole would ultimately choose to sacrifice himself and all living conduits for the sake of the vast bulk of humanity, curing the plague in the process, and being forever mortalized as the patron saint of Numeray. Festival of Blood is a side story, an ambiguously accurate retelling of events told in-universe by Cole's best friend Zeke. 
with very little thought by the writers as to its greater place in the series timeline. It shows Cole in Numeray, wielding his signature melee weapon, the Amp, a weapon built for Cole by Zeke during their passage to Numeray in Infamous 2. The story features Cole being infected by an ancient vampire, Bloody Mary, with only until daylight to kill Bloody Mary, or else Cole's will would be hers for all of time. Of course, Cole would defeat this threat and have his affliction lifted by the end of the game. There isn't much to go off of in terms of timeline cues besides what I just mentioned. It clearly takes place before Cole's sacrifice, as he's seen alive and well by the game's ending. He does, however, possess his Ionic Storm ability, a power first gained in Infamous 1, which he loses after being drained by the Beast, that he then goes on to reacquire after his absorption of the final Blast Shard near the end of Infamous 2. For the sake of scaling, I see it fit, based on this, to scale Vampire Cole accordingly. Like I said earlier, there isn't much thought given to this story, but it's all we have to go on. Vampire Cole should possess the same level of power as his Infamous 2 counterpart just after absorbing the last of the Blast Cores this being before the new amp to his stats, given to him by his new vampiric biology. Cole is an experienced free climber and parkour practitioner. He showcased this skill as early as his excursion to New Marais after dead flooded four years prior to the events of Infamous 1. He's an apparently skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant, mixing close quarter strikes with acrobatic combos. He's shown skill with melee weaponry through the usage of the amp, a weapon described as a cross between a baseball bat and a lightning rod. With this weapon, he can channel his electric powers through it, once again, and mixing close quarters combat with acrobatic prowess. He would as well inherit the skills of Kessler, a version of himself with nearly a hundred years of experimentation with his abilities. It's also shown in Infamous Second Son that through the absorption of blast cores and the subsequent acquisition of new powers, an ability stated to be unique to the likes of Delson and Cole comes with an immediate and significant understanding of that power. Shown during Second Son's final boss, when Augustine states the only difference between herself and Delson after his absorbing of her concrete powers is her seven years of experience, of which Delson is able to quickly overshadow after absorbing only four blast cores. This means that Cole would effectively have many years worth of experience even after only immediately gaining new powers. Cole can fight off small armies of superpowered soldiers, possessing technology at least a hundred years more advanced than the contemporary world. He can accurately predict the results of his actions as seen with his karmic decisions, showcasing this in a combat scenario by judging the risks and rewards of using a fuel tank to damage a giant conduit golem. Cole's most well-known power is his ability to control electricity, also known as electrokinesis, of which Cole may be the most versatile user of in fiction. He can fire a simple lightning blast, including variants of greater power or multiple individual bolts, or even a constant stream of electricity. He can emit shock waves capable of flipping over cars or redirecting projectiles. He can manipulate the gravity of both objects and enemies to send them flying. He can fire balls of kinetic energy, leading to a buildup of explosive force. He can fire electric rockets for added force. These as well can induce an anti-gravity effect on objects struck by it. He can redirect these rockets mid-air after striking an enemy with a bolt. He can lob electric grenades that can either stick to enemies or even attach themselves to the nearest enemy even if the grenade misses. He can use magnetism to both pull enemies towards himself or himself to other locations. He can generate shields that will convert projectiles into energy that Cole can absorb. Cole can coat his arms in electric blades to do greater close quarters damage if he's ever separated from his amp. If falling from a high distance, he can emit an electric charge ground pound, creating a shockwave in the surrounding area. Cole can as well use his electricity to essentially glide through the air. But electricity isn't Cole's only forte. Depending on your karma choices throughout Infamous 2, Cole can either attain ice or napalm powers. With his ice he can, form a stalagmite under his feet to propel him airborne, he can create an ice barrier with which to protect himself from attack, a giant ball of condensed sub-zero gas in the form of a rocket that will freeze enemies on impact, ice grenades to either freeze enemies or provide cover, and the creation of ice spikes that Cole will telekinetically toss at opponents. With his name palm powers, he can propel himself forward, causing an explosion at the end of his arc. He can create smoke that can disorientate a crowd of enemies, throw explosive napalm grenades and rockets. All of the energy required to perform these actions can be recharged from any source of electricity, such as the neuroelectric energy produced by the human body, or lightning that Cole himself can call down, which will as well empower his most devastating abilities, his ionic charges. Ultimate attacks that Cole can perform after his absorption of ions, atoms with an electric charge. He can call down said lightning, summon a tornado, produce an AoE freezing attack, or an AoE life drain. Vampire Cole would most likely have access to the bulk of these abilities, as well as even greater regen. 
flight via transforming into a swarm of bats, a resistance to illusions, in this case those created by vampires, the will to resist the willpower manipulation of Bloody Mary, and the resistance to holy weapons, even those infused by God himself, seen in his ability to wield the barbed cross, a holy weapon that would disintegrate normal vampires in one hit. Beast Cole would possess all of his evil karma powers, as well as those of the beast, such as the ability to remove and alter powers derived from the conduit gene, total gravity manipulation, pyrokinesis, shapeshifting, teleportation, and the ability to create something resembling a black hole. Good Ending Cole, with his RFI amp, would have unlimited electric reserves, flight, and the ability to take a conduit's powers either in a beam of radiation or planet-wide AoE, this being at the cost of his own life. Kessler has shown powers exclusive to himself, with Cole not showcasing these abilities. It is worth noting that Cole would have every reason to potentially unlock these powers, perhaps even mid-combat. Let me explain. Kessler's last act was mentally projecting all of his life up to that point into Cole's mind, all of his secrets. It's been stated that Cole can develop new powers on the fly by mixing it up mid-combat. Conduits as well have showcased the ability to develop new powers in moments of stress, such as with Abigail Walker, a certainly non-extraordinary conduit in regards to her physiology, consistently developing new powers when pushed all throughout Infamous First Light meaning Kessler's powers could very well be attained by Cole, such as summoning electric doppelgangers, projecting thoughts of doubts into the minds of his opponents, teleportation, and time travel. While not as frequently showcasing his super strength as much as his speed or attack potency, you might be forgiven to assume Cole isn't that impressive, but you'd be wrong. With just his bare physical strength, he could pry open the mouse of a devourer, a feat calculated to take 375.36 tons of force. He was shown to casually lift the metal support beam over his head. With his powers, he's been able to derail a train car with a telekinetic shockwave. He can easily toss cars hundreds of meters with his kinetic pulse. His telekinetic powers should scale to his amps both his beast empowerment and his RFI amp, meaning he should be able to lift 946 tons, aka the beast's weight. Cole has consistently reacted to automatic gunfire. He was able to redirect a rocket in midair. He can be seen dodging grenade explosions in-game, and has showcased massively hypersonic plus speeds by dodging lightning blasts fired by Kessler in their final encounter. Kessler himself should scale to this speed as well, seeing as he can likewise dodge Cole's lightning, with his speed being practically enhanced by his teleportation ability. And after absorbing the final blast shard in Infamous 2, Cole dodged a beam of radiation from the Rayfield Inhibitor, a device consistently stated to function through radiation. This feat has been calced to relativistic plus, seeing as electromagnetic radiation travels at the same speed as light. Vampire Cole should scale to this feat as well, and Cole would surely be this speed, if not faster, after being empowered by the RFI. With this, it's safe to say that by the ending of Infamous 2, Cole can react to objects moving between 50% and 100% the speed of light. Cole can, as well, slow his perception of time with precision mode, essentially boosting his already insane speed. Even before getting his powers, Cole was stated to have survived a car accident which should have killed him. Throughout the first game, Cole consistently performed city-level feats of strength, such as his one-shotting of the Ray Sphere, a device completely unaffected by its own city-level explosions, his polarity wall which converts kinetic energy of bullets into electricity he then absorbs. The energy required to do this has been calculated to be city-level. Cole would furthermore scale to this range of power, seeing as Kessler could generate city levels of force through his strikes, which generated powerful earthquakes. The entire point of Kessler's involvement in Infamous One's plot was to ensure Cole would be stronger than him, both mentally and physically, in an effort to prepare him to defeat the Beast, a goal at which Kessler had prior failed at. In Infamous 2, Cole would see various amps to his power, achieving even greater showings of force. He would out of the gate scale to the beast, a conduit who simply by reforming himself after being atomically destroyed, passively created a large mountain plus level storm. He would then immediately go on to one-shot Empire City, another mountain level feat. It's also worth mentioning that while the Ray Sphere explosion pulled John apart at an atomic level, it did negligible damage to Cole by comparison. After being amped by the RFI, he'd easily beat the beast surely placing him in the upper range of Large Mountain Plus. Likewise, with his evil ending counterpart, who would simply have his own power, which was already rivaling the Beast, plus the Beast's power. In conclusion, Cole McGrath and all of his variants are incredibly powerful and versatile characters, wielding an arsenal of abilities, skills, and hacks. Fear the Demon of Empire City, and respect the patron saint of Numeray.